Okay, let's do some math for fun. Here's the integral for you guys. We have to integrate from negative 1 to 1 of cosine x times inverse cosine x. In fact, this integral is actually not that bad at all, because you see we are going from negative 1 to 1, and cosine is even, inverse cosine is also even, so we can actually just have 2 times the integral, but we have to go from 0 to 1, like this. And now we can integrate. Let's put down the 2 first though, and as we all know, the integral of cosine is positive sign. So let's put that down right here. Keep in mind this is positive sign. And then integrating cosine inverse, we get sine inverse, right? And that's pretty much it. And of course, now we have to just plug in numbers from 0 to 1. Putting 1, and when we put in 0 into sine x right here, for example, the second part is going to be 0, so it doesn't matter. This is it. We have 2 sine of 1, inverse sine of 1, right? So hopefully you guys all like this video, and as always, that's it. I know, I know, this is so wrong in so many ways. Yeah, this is just, I know, I know. For example, inverse cosine is not even even. <laughs> that sounds fun, but like, you know, that's truth. Cosine, the inverse cosine exists is not even even, right? And of course, when we integrate the product of two functions, we cannot just integrate the first and then integrate the second. And the worst part is the integral of inverse cosine is not inverse sine, right? So it's just so wrong in so many ways. It's okay, because I'll show you guys a legitimate way to do this. So here we go. Let's look at the integral from negative 1 to 1, and we have cosine x times inverse cosine x dx, like this. Well, here's the deal. In fact, we can use an identity to help us out right here, and we can actually use some kind of the even up properties in the integral. Again, cosine inverse is not even even, right? But check this out. Today, if we have sine inverse plus cosine inverse, well, they're just the co-functions of each other, and we're just looking at the angles. Well, when we add them up, we will end up with pi over 2. Right? The co-functions stands for complementary, so when you have sine and cosine, if you're talking about the inverse and the inputs are the same, they will add up to pi over 2. Well, let's take a look. Here we go. Let's put this down as integral from negative 1 to 1, and we have cosine x. This part, well, let me just minus this on both sides, so we get pi over 2, and then we will have the minus the inverse sine of x. So this right here is good, dx. And now, let's do this. Distribute and then break down into two integrals. So the first integral that we'll get is the integral from negative 1 to 1. And this times that, perhaps we can just put the pi over 2 in the front. And we have the cosine right here. And let's close the integral like this. And for the second one, of course, we will have to do this times that. And we will just have to minus the integral from negative 1 to 1, cosine x times that. And we cannot take anything else, okay? So this is just cosine x times the inverse sine of x, like this. Now, here's the deal. This is the jet. Cosine x is legitimately even. Sine inverse is legitimately odd. And when we have even times odd for functions, right? An even function times an odd function is still an odd function. So all in all, we have an odd function right here, right? And we are integrating this from negative 1 to 1. So in fact, this right here will be 0. So this second one, bye-bye. Now we just have to integrate this real quick. Well, cosine x is even, so let me just write this down right here. And let me just use the infer property, because I want to make it up on the first one. So here's the deal. We still have the pi over 2 in the front. And now for the second one, we are going to have this. Let me just put down multiply by 2, and then we have the integral, and we will be going from 0 to 1. Again, this part is just the even integral property, and uh, we have the cosine x inside, of course, dx. And now we can integrate. No problem on that. Well, of course, uh, let me just write down the pi over 2 times 2, and when we integrate cosine, we get positive sine, 
And of course, we have to plug in 1 and plug in 0. So let me just plug in 1 right here because when we plug in 0, sum of 0 is just 0, so it doesn't matter. And in the end, of course, we can just cancel the twos. So we get pi times sine of 1. And that's it. So that question, no, that answer was so wrong, right? This is the answer. That's it. Hopefully, you guys all like this video. Okay? Thank you. Wait, hold on one sec, hold on one sec, hold on one sec. Maybe you guys notice this. Pay attention to what the pi over 2 is. As we all know, sine of pi over 2 will give us 1. In another word, inverse sine of 1 will give us pi over 2. In the end, in fact, right here, if you would like, let's put on the 2 right here. This 2 in blue. This right here is still in black, so we have the sine of 1. But, again, pi over 2. We can write that as inverse sine of 1. Well, well, I guess this answer wasn't so wrong, isn't it? Anyway, hopefully you guys all like this video, right? I want to thank, I want to thank my viewer and gal. I hope I, I, hope I say your name correctly. If I don't, I'm sorry for sending me this um, question it's really really fun and of course i also make this up so that was great it's quite a coincidence right you can just do that in a totally wrong way and you will end up with this amazing answer very nice right so thank you for sending me this on my website right? and anyway this is done for sure